Hey guys, it's Dima from Marshall Club. Today I want to continue a controversial subject that's been running in a lot of our videos lately. That is the fight between Bruce Lee and Wong Jackman. Uh, a lot of you guys have been seeing trailers for a movie called Birth of the Dragon floating around. A lot of you guys are wondering, should I watch it, should I not? Uh, watch our review. It's, it should be in the description down below, and that should give you a pretty good idea of what to expect from that movie. But today I want to talk about what really happened. The fight between the future movie star and the reclusive kung fu master in Chinatown. Um, Let's, I think for the last 50 years, it's been about 50 years since that fight took place, there have been a lot of rumors going around, and I would say it's become a very one-sided topic. Basically, popular opinion rules that Bruce Lee won that fight and won that fight easily. I want to challenge a couple notions about that today, and uh, hopefully you'll come away from this video with a slightly different idea of what happened. Before we start, I want to emphasize the fact that I'm uh, by no means an expert on this conversation. Uh, but I have read a lot about it. Obviously, I have a vested interest in this. Uh, Wong Tekman is actually my teacher's teacher's teacher. So for me, this is a matter of family pride. So obviously, what actually happened is an important matter to me. So, like I mentioned in earlier videos, Sifu Wong is my teacher's teacher's teacher. So this story is obviously very close to my heart. But I'm going to talk about this with as little bias as possible. If you believe me, let's get on with this. I'll also mention that um, I have read a couple articles concerning this fight, but most of the information that I take and refer to is from a book called Showdown in Oakland, written by Sifu Rick Wing. He's actually the person who runs Sifu Wong's school now. Of course, Sifu Wing is on the side of his Sifu, but if you read his book, he actually does a lot of research. He doesn't just take words for it. And that's what I encourage you guys to do. Don't just take someone's word for it. Because understand that there is mystique in martial arts movies. Bruce Lee is larger than life, mainly because of what we see on film. And because of that, people start to see Bruce Lee as someone who is infallible. Guys, no matter how great someone is, that is never the case. Okay, so a lot of people have their opinions on this, and that's fine. And a lot of people side firmly with Bruce Lee. That's also fine. Just understand that uh, people's exploits on film tend to create a shroud of mystique. So, take it with a grain of salt, understand that sometimes your opinion is affected by what you think of them based on what you see in the films. That wasn't the case now, because back in the 60s, Bruce Lee was not a movie star yet, he was just a martial arts teacher like a lot of other people who exist in the martial arts community now. But understand that Bruce Lee wasn't the superstar that he is now, he wasn't the legend that he is now, so imagine this fight simply as two martial artists trying to settle a difference through their martial arts. And I think it'll be a lot easier to imagine how this fight played out. Honestly, I don't think there was a clear winner, no matter what any movie tries to portray, but uh, just hear me out. So, the first popular idea about this fight that is circulating that I want to challenge is the idea that the fight had to do with race. I don't think that's true. Uh, Bruce Lee was not the first martial artist to teach Westerners martial arts. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys a story that will hopefully help you guys understand a little bit better. So, understand that Bruce Lee was a child actor. He's been, uh, even before he was a martial arts superstar, he had been in as many as 20 films in Hong Kong. And because of that, he had some star power in Chinatown. Um, there was a movie premiering in Chinatown. A famous actress from Hong Kong was making a world tour to promote it. So when they made their stop in Chinatown, they naturally enlisted the help of Bruce Lee in order to help promote the film. Now, in order to make the premiere a lot more interesting, they threw a dance performance as well as a martial arts demonstration. See, Bruce Lee was actually a dancer and a martial artist, so he was able to do a little bit of both. So while he was giving a Wing Chun demonstration before the movie, uh, he did, decided to demonstrate his famous one-inch punch on somebody. So he called somebody from the audience, had them hold up the pad as usual, and he did the technique on him. Everybody is prone to make mistakes, and he didn't hit the pad clearly on the mark, and because of that, his blow glanced off the person, and he looked like a fool for a second, to be frank. He looked like a fool. And naturally, this started to elicit a, a less than favorable response from the crowd. And guys, I hate to break this to you, Bruce Lee was reputed to be a hothead. So when he saw people jeering at him, he punched the guy again and knocked the guy over and people called foul play. So when people started to boo more, he adamantly stated to the crowd, look, if anybody doubts my martial arts ability, just come to my school in Oakland and we'll settle this. And you see, that, those, you heard the term fighting words, those were fighting words. So to the whole Chinese community, that 
equated to an open challenge. So that was the talk of the town for a little while. People were meeting up in cafes talking about, do you hear this young, brash martial artist issuing a challenge to the martial arts community? Somebody should take him up on that fight. So naturally, a couple people got interested and they went to Sifu Wong, who, by the way, was not at that event at the Sunsing Theater. And basically they're like, look, um, you're a reputable teacher in our community and we've got this uh, disrespectful person. We've got this young hothead issuing a challenge to the community. Would you like to be the person to answer that challenge? And he's like, you know what, sign me up. So they actually went through a formal challenging process. They wrote a letter and they're like, look, we want to take you up on that challenge. Uh, do you really want to prove that you can beat anyone? Take this challenge and let's prove it. So Bruce Lee, you know, he was a hothead. He was an up-and-coming martial arts celebrity. So what do you do in the face of a challenge? You don't back down, and Bruce Lee was not one to back down. So this, he accepted the challenge, they set up for the fight, and they actually met at his school in Oakland to do this fight. Um, I hear varying accounts on how many eyewitnesses there were, but I imagine it was, uh, from what I've heard, it was somewhere between 6 and 12 people, and they witnessed the fight. Um, guys, not everything is like the movies. In the movies, the, the good guy fights the bad guy and he wins over the bad guy. Fights don't always end like that in real life and it is my opinion that this fight didn't end in a clear victory for either side. Now if you watch the movie The Birth of the Dragon, the one thing that I do say they did well was that they portrayed that the result of the fight was neither A nor B. It was some gray area in between and I think that's actually akin with what happened in real life. I don't think Bruce Lee definitively won the fight. I don't think Wong Tekman definitively won the fight. I think basically it went its course. People were getting in shots on each other and then people called the end to the fight before anyone could be named a winner. I do believe that's true. What I will say was impressive about the movie is that the writers of the movie must have read accounts about what happened during the fight. Um, it's widely reported that when the fight was about to start and they were doing their salute, Bruce Lee did a finger jab at Wong Jackman's uh, eyes or, and then barely missed him so that there was a scratch left on his face. I do think that actually happened because I've heard that over multiple accounts. Um, I've also heard that at one point in the fight, Wong got Bruce Lee in some kind of a headlock and was able to deal like some kind of a heavy blow to his neck. I have heard that, and both of those events are actually portrayed in the movie version of the fight. So, if you are very, if you are in any way interested in what actually happened during the fight, I think the movie is worth a watch simply to watch out for those aspects. Um, as far as the actual outcome of the fight, I don't believe there was a clear winner, and I, I do think that both sides of this fight were willing to put the matter down once the fight was over. Now, how did this fight become the huge controversy that it is today? Well had to do with social media. Nowadays we, we deal with social media like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Back then they had more traditional outlets for news. They had the news on TV, they had newspapers. And I think it's the newspapers that actually blew this up into much more than it was. So at first both fighters agreed to put it down and never talk about it again. And then an article surfaced in the newspaper saying that Bruce Lee got his ass kicked. That's right. It was the idea that Bruce Lee won the fight was actually not the first one to enter the popular opinion. It was actually that Bruce Lee lost. Somebody issued a news article saying that Bruce Lee was walking with the actress who was formally promoting her movie when all this began. And they say that a crazed stalker walked up to her and was trying to get at her. And that Bruce Lee, being a gentleman, stepped in front of them you know, to defend her honor. And they say that that person actually pushed Bruce Lee down and knocked him down and took off running. But it was enough to say in the article that he got his ass handed to him by some crazed fan and that's where this all started. He got really mad, issued a counter article saying that no, 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 no. This was a fight between me and Wong and I kicked his ass. You know, he's, he's, gone on, um, he's gone on public record saying that he definitively won the fight. Obviously there was some pushback, there was, an article, uh, there was another article saying that Wong won the fight and it went back and forth, back and forth. I don't remember exactly how many articles were published on this topic, but ultimately it ended with Wong giving a very straightforward account of what happened in the fight. He didn't claim that he won, but he did say that he was willing to face Bruce again if anyone questioned him. He said, I'm willing to face Bruce Lee in a public rematch, that way it can be known to the world what really happens and we can put this matter to rest. And that was the last of it. Bruce Lee never said anything. Now, as far as why, I'm not sure, but I think it has to do with the fact that at this point, Bruce Lee was already skyrocketing in his career. He was already starting to appear in movies, and I think it just wasn't relevant to him anymore. Look, guys, I think 
it would help us all to take this topic with a grain of salt. A lot of us think Bruce Lee won simply because he is the badass in the martial arts movies. And yes, Bruce Lee was a legend. He was able to do a lot of great things in his career. But understand that at the end of the day, he was just human like you or me. As blasphemous as it may sound, I don't think that Bruce Lee won every fight that he fought in his life. Nobody ever does. Uh, understand that martial arts is not about what you win or what you lose. It's about who you develop yourself to be through hard and dedicated practice. That's the real takeaway. Let that be the thing you take away from this topic, okay? Uh, are you okay, dude? You're like sweating. I'm, it is so hot right now. You're hot or you're it's nervous? Like, maybe both. <laughs> I, I don't know. I talked a lot. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that something I said uh, provoked your thought or at least encouraged you to consider the alternatives. But if it didn't, that's okay. If you want to fight me, it's okay. You can find me anytime. I'll take you out. <laughs> but uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, if you guys have any thoughts about this, about what really happened, if you think I'm full of shit, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. We'll talk it out. Um, guys, as usual, stay tuned. If you like what you saw, be sure to... <laughs> Stop that. As usual, if you like what you saw, be sure to subscribe to us. Uh, we're putting out a lot of videos. You're definitely going to like what we're going to put out next. Uh, be sure to check us out on Instagram, follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook. And uh, if you want a Marshall Club t-shirt, just know that they're for sale on BigCartel.com. As usual, it's been a pleasure talking about martial arts with you guys. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have to say. But with that, we'll see you next time. I'm Dima from Marshall Club, and I'm signing out.